I'm Sarah. This is a quick demo of how to use PCORD 7 for ecological community analysis. This is great software for analyzing how species are related to each other and to environmental factors, disturbances, and experimental treatments. You can use PCORD for any kind of multivariate data, but most people use it to study community data, where you have recorded presence or abundance for a large number of species in many sample units. I'm going to use the Oak Woods example dataset that comes with the software, so you can try this too. The species matrix, or main matrix, has cover data for plants in western Oregon. The second matrix has data on various environmental factors and historical disturbances. PCORD is really easy to use. To start, put your species data in an Excel spreadsheet with each column a different species, and each row a different observation, or sample unit. The top row should be the species names. The first column contains the name for each observation or sample unit, or you can just number them sequentially. Be sure to put a number in every cell of your data matrix, even if this means entering many zeros. Your species data should go in one spreadsheet, and your environmental data should go in a spreadsheet with the sample units in the same order as for species data. The second spreadsheet can contain anything else that you want to relate to the species data, such as elevation or coding for experimental treatments or levels in a nested sampling design. In this example, both the species matrix and the second matrix are in the file oakwoodssimple.xlsx. It's called simple because there's no header on the matrix other than the first row containing the variable names. When you finish setting up your data, save the spreadsheet, then close Excel. You have to close Excel or it will block other software from reading the file. Now I'm in PCORD. Select File, New Project, then enter a name for the project. Let's call it Oak Woods. I have selected this user data folder to store my data for this project. We'll import the main and second matrices from oakwoodsimple.xlsx, so drag that file into both the main and second boxes. Then click Save Project File. Select Simple Excel Spreadsheet as the type of matrix. Tell it which, which worksheet you want it to import. Let's do Species first. You then get this dialog where you specify what is in the spreadsheet. We want to read the row names from the file. The rows are stands and the columns are species. The row names start in cell A2 and the column names start in B1. So that's already correct. OK that. Then specify which variables to include. We're going to use all the species so you can leave them checked. Leave the cues as they are since all of the variables are quantitative rather than categorical. Okay, that imports it to a temporary matrix called work.mjm. Now it wants you to repeat this process for the second matrix, so select the second matrix. The next dialog will be the same as before, except that the columns are now miscellaneous variables rather than species. So let's call the columns attributes or attribs for short. And OK that. The, this next step is different from the main matrix because some of the variables in the second matrix are categorical not quantitative. So click on the Q's to change them to C's for the categorical variables. OK that. Now PCORD wants you to save the two matrices you imported, so give them names like oakwoods1.mjm and oakwoods2.mjm. 
MJM is the extension for PCR data matrices. Go ahead and save that as a project now. File, Save, Project. This will allow us to reopen this set of files at any time in the future. Now we are all set to do an analysis. One of the most popular and effective ordination techniques is non-metric multidimensional scaling, or NMS. So let's do that. The point is to summarize the species data with just a couple of axes, then relate the variables in the second matrix to those axes. Select Ordination, NMS. Let's run it in autopilot mode and use the medium setting, which compromises speed and thoroughness of the search for the best solution. PCR automatically includes a randomization test, which helps to evaluate the quality of the solution compared to randomized data. This is an important feature that is not available in R. PCR Autopilot with the medium setting evaluates 4D down to 1D solutions. For distance measure, let's use Sorensen and leave the other settings at their defaults. Then select OK. For a title, we'll just type what we're doing, NMS Sorensen Distance Medium Autopilot. Okay. While your computer is searching for the best solution, graphs of stress for each run are displayed. NMS will run with 50 starts with the real data set and 50 starts using different randomizations of the data, shuffling within columns. So what the heck is stress? Well, stress is the opposite of fit. So with each starting configuration, fit improves and stress decreases. NMS improves the solution as much as it can, then starts again with another configuration. The curves are color-coded by the number of dimensions it is using. More dimensions give lower stress. After running it many times, PCORD will choose the solution with the lowest stress, or best fit, for each dimensionality. Then it repeats the process, but after having shuffled the data for each run. Note that the blue curves on the left are for the real data and their asymptotes are at a lower stress than the red curves for the randomized data. Don't worry if you don't immediately get what these curves are telling you. You can think it through in the future. Plus, you can save the graphs for when they are done for future reference. As far as I know, PCORD is the only software to give you these graphs. So this is reasonably fast, but there are only 47 sample units. The runtime goes up exponentially with the number of sample units. PCR can handle very large data sets, but sometimes time gets to be a factor. Now that the runs are complete, close the stress graph. You now have three new files. A result file with numerical results. the graph row file with coordinates for graphing the stands, and the graph call file with coordinates for the species. These are all temporary files, so let's save them under new names, file, save as, all. Enter a base name, for example, NMS medium. This name will then be used as a basis for naming all of your file, all of your three files. Now let's look at the result file and scroll down to the first table that summarizes what happened. Each row of the table shows an increasing number of dimensions. Note that the p-values from the randomization test indicate that solutions of any dimensionality from 1 through 4 are stronger than expected by chance. Autopilot chose a 3D solution because it reduces the stress by over 5 units versus a 2D solution while giving a small p value. The final stress for the best 3D solution was 16.4. Not bad. 
If you try this, you might get a slightly different number because we are using random starting configurations. Now let's graph the ordination. Start with a joint plot, graph, graph ordination, 2D. If you're unfamiliar with interpreting ordinations, see chapters 13 and 16 in McCune and Grace's Community Analysis book. Each triangle is a stand. Each point is a species. Let's turn on the species labels. Those are a little small, so let's make the labels easier to read. Where they overlap, you can drag them out of the way. The radiating lines show the strength and direction of relationship of the species ordination to the variables in the second matrix. The strongest quantitative variables turns out to be species, species richness, PDIR, heat load, and tree height. The points are color coded by aspect class, but we can change that to other categorical variables. Before we experiment with that, I'll make it easier to see by turning off the species and species labels. I think grazing might be important, so let's overlay that. It does look like grazed and ungrazed stands have different communities. Let's see how much of the variation in the distance matrix is represented in the ordination diagram. So in this case, the 2D solution represents 63% of the variation in the distance matrix. Let's do a contour overlay of a particular variable. Let's see how one of my least favorite plants, poison oak, is related to the ordination. Looks like it's associated with short trees and high species diversity. You can also calculate correlations between axes and variables in the second matrix. Let's rotate the diagram so that major vectors in the joint plot are aligned with the axes by angle continuous. Select five degrees for the increment and click next repeatedly to gradually rotate the ordination. I'm curious how the tree species relate to the ordination, so let's use a hilltop plot to show regions of high values for particular tree species. Each colored area represents the region of highest values of the overlay variable. Take your time and explore the options. There's a lot here. So this is a brief introduction to ordination with PCORD 7, but there is so much more that you can do. Just a quick look at some other menu items. Advisor gives you a critical summary statistics and has an analysis wizard for helping you decide which analyses are appropriate. Modify has all kinds of tools for data management and transformations. Summary provides many critical statistics, including outlier analyses and species area curves. Ordination has 12 different ordination methods. Many graphs are available besides ordinations, including dendograms, NMS scree plots, dominance diversity curves, scatter plot matrix, distributions, box plots. 
The Groups menu has many different methods for finding and comparing groups. The Traits menu makes it easy to calculate community weighted means, functional diversity, and fourth corner analysis. The Help menu provides lots of resources, most importantly a detailed help system. You can access it either by clicking on the Help menu, then Contents, or by using the Help button for particular dialogues. For example, say you want to run MRPP, Groups, MRPP, but don't understand the first dialog. Just click on the Help button and it takes you right to the spot you need in the Help system. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. Remember to have fun! Thanks for watching!